One thing many people seem to miss in cartoons is this sense of cartoonish innocence. When I grew up, shows like Hey Arnold, Kids Next Door, and Ed Ed and Eddie captured the sense of being in a neighborhood along with your favorite characters like a kid, regardless of age. They had this sense of adventure that relied a lot on your childhood wonder and well-crafted comedy. Whether it was that they invented or the people they interacted with, it often came with a sense of curiosity, naivety, or just a novel approach that adults who may have lost their childhood wonder would have just never thought of. It could be a gigantic battle that involves cool explosions and intricate scenes, or just something as simple as a dare. I dare you to throw this. I dare. Okay. <laughs> The dares start very small and I enjoy that a lot. It gives reference to the escalation that is to come. It's not a new way to set up conflict by any means. The episode Do Me A Solid from Regular Show is actually very similar in structure even if the events that happen in it are drastically different. They both play to the appeal of this universe law in a sense. That you must do what the law is and with both episodes they build the authority and power of this law based off of the loyalty and trust of the friendship. In this case here, Jeff picks truth instead of a Dare, but there is no truth. So as a child would respond to another kid not wanting to do said dare, Sumo responds with, Well, then you're a chicken. And then what? That's it. Nothing worse than being a chicken. Jeff, as minor as his actual screen time would be, serves as the perfect symbol of what is to come. Because it is with his cautiousness and timid nature that often serves as the voice of reason, contrasted well against Sumo's recklessness and often blunt personality. It is both of these extremes that often build Clarence as the near-perfect glue in the friendship. And this friendship circle has grown and developed a lot, and this episode is no different. In fact, in this episode, it is taken to another level because the roles would change. Said voice of reason, Jeff would actually not be in the latter half of this episode too much, leaving someone else to be the voice of reason for the other person's questionable actions. 21, 1, 2, 2, But wait, you didn't even restart where you counted, you just started counting at the spot that you forgot, like what? It's like when Spongebob counted sand on sand, but that's another episode that I actually talked about. But getting back to the point of questionable actions, we actually see the dares rise in intensity quite nicely, without seeming too jarring in terms of pace. Note here how the burger falls to the ground, and then they look at each other, and you can easily predict that Clarence will now dare Sumo to eat it. It's a really nice pace combined with this frame of inside Sumo's mouth. It gives off a gross, but in a way that a child would naturally be sort of way. I feel like the gross aesthetic, as polarizing in our community as it may be, is merely a tool in a grand scheme of emotions. And disgust, while a negative emotion, isn't inherently a bad thing to use in animation like so. But it never comes across that the episode primarily wishes to gross you out. It merely uses these things, like the scene with the burger and the following scene with the fries, to show you that they have to do the dare no matter what, or they'll be chicken, no matter the consequence. This actually evolves when Jeff's ketchup that he initially went to get is destroyed by Clarence. Dare you to to make Jeff smile. But that's not a dare. Yes, it is. I'm not doing that. Then you're chicken. Chick, chick, beep, 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 beep. I'm chick, not chick, chick, chicken. It's okay, Simo. I love chickens. Little arguments like that really sell the show to me. It doesn't seem condescending in the way that your average Nickelodeon or Disney show may be, or at least make interactions appear. It does seem like something that would happen and I am looking through the lens of a genuine story and not something that has been market tested and true for me. I also praise the subtle bump of Mr. Reese, who will be very important to a point I plan to make later. They continue to do dares that cause messes around them, with both Sumo and Clarence not caring because it's fun, as children would normally do. However, a very important part of Jeff's role is highlighted here. The next time you decide to do something, anything, ask yourself, would Jeff do this? This leads into the message going over Clarence and Sumo's heads as their antics get more and more out of hand. Just like in Gumball, I enjoy the hard cuts before the action on screen comes to a complete finish, and it gives the scene a lot more urgency as your mind processes what happens. But with the added abrupt finish, it catches you off guard if done well. I actually praise this also in my recent review of regular show's high score. Also, to not rag on this police, but you know when you get close to someone that you're running to, you kinda have to capture them? You can't just keep running and expect them to stop. It, it feels like they're trying to just run here. 
It kind of looks a little silly. But what tops that is Sumo falling perfectly in place while on a shopping cart. Now impressionable kids who probably will do this anyway for the lulls, despite lulls not doing anything beyond getting a cheap laugh out of friends, who will possibly leave you for toxicity in the end leading to a sad, depressed, significant otherless life in your mother's basement, as she looks through the baby album for the 295th time, wondering where exactly everything went wrong, don't try this at home. But I'm sure when you get on a shopping cart and fall like that, physics will tell me that you're not gonna stay like that, the way that this animation implies. Yeah, you gonna like that dirty fall. <laughs> okay. <laughs> what are you guys doing? Why are you looking at this kid? Like I could have sworn you were looking this way, not that way. And you, I don't know what they did to your face, but you look like the accumulation of the colon three face. I guess some people call it the cat face. But getting back on track, as you can see, they slowly get more and more hurt with each reckless dare. And it is with Jeff's absence that you can see how far they will go, not thinking of the consequences. It is that main reason as to why Jeff would remind them, hey, if I wouldn't do this, don't do this. Or or would Jeff do this? Now originally I was going to do a simple scenes like this, a series in which I talk about just one scene of a particular episode, implying that I think that the entire episode isn't really worth the time and effort that a main review usually gets. However, with more and more of watching this episode, I felt like I couldn't merely just do a singular scene, because it actually doesn't stand out as much as I initially thought in terms of impact. I will play it straightforward, but I want you to remember, this entire episode so far has been about fun, and games, and dares, and being carefree, and then this scene hit you hard. Huh? <laughs> say it, say it. Hello? Hi, this is Sumo. I love you. Oh, well, uh, thanks. I really needed to hear that today. Clarence, you didn't have to do this to me. This is me reading straight off the Clarence Wikia for a neat little bit of trivia. In Dare Day, the episode I'm talking about, he once had a dog named Bandit, who died shortly, presumably after he was fired from the force afterwards. He being Mr. Reese. That's a very out of left field scene that the episode doesn't take seriously, unlike in Mystery Girl or Ice Cream Hunt. This is actually played for comedy, but when watching it out of context, you would think that it would be heartwarming and to some degree it still is, but when given the perspective of it being a dare, it turns out to have a double-sided effect. On one end, comedic or crazy, and on the other end, serious or sad. The episode never really acknowledges this, besides a small cameo in the beginning. And it continues on as if it never happened. The episode actually gets to a point where it seems self-destructive, and it is actually Clarence's trust and carelessness that gets him really hurt in the process. It takes Sumo to take the role of Jeff and start to worry about any possible consequences. That switch of where all of them stand is an interesting flip and it leads into a lot of Clarence and Sumo getting even more hurt. <laughs> 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 Jokes aside, Sumo attempts multiple times to get Clarence out of this situation, but each time, Clarence would assure Sumo that he's fine, when in reality, he's only doing well because it didn't get serious. But then of course it gets serious. Now, this scene involves a lot more kids, and it's a very specific stunt, and the entire scene actually plays out a little contrived. The stunt kind of seemed like a cheap way to get Clarence into a high risk situation. Sumo does try once more, however, because neither of them really understood the moral that Jeff was trying to get across, Clarence goes through with it and the way the scene plays out is really cool. It demonstrates a near masterful use of subversion. Note the rope breaking but the egg cracking in the next scene, leading into Sumo holding the egg, keeping the theme, leading into the machine that actually turns out to not be Clarence, who just has a broken arm at the end. That entire sequence is done perfectly, giving off the perfect amount of information leading you into what happened without actually showing it, but also reeling what you think might have happened a little back, the showing that it actually wasn't as bad. The last Last few scenes show Sumo understanding indirectly why Jeff is so adamant in keeping Clarence and Sumo out of harm. Albeit to some, he may go too far, but his cautious attitude thoroughly prevents situations like this episode's climax to occur. Sumo truly cares about Clarence, and it isn't in his nature to emit these emotions. Particularly noted in his first few attempts to move away from the subject, his body language gives off that he isn't comfortable with the situation that he's in. One may write off Clarence as a stupid kid, but I see this more as Clarence being careless, but also just focusing on the fun that he's having with his friend, after all, blissfully ignorant as some children may be. It is his innocence, but also deep trust and friendship that gives this episode a heartwarming feel without getting mushy. He's incredibly naive, but he's learning along with his friends. It's the basic premise for this series, and with episodes like this, feel free to watch. 
unless you're chicken. And then what? That's it. Nothing worse than being a chicken. Alright, I know this wasn't Hey Arnold, that'll be the next video. I really do plan to get it out after this one, but I really fancied a true stylistic change. So a lot of what you see comes from multiple drafts, variations, a lot of input. I'll go more in depth on this a little later, but let me know what you think about it. Social medias and my request video is in the description below, and until next time, I hope your time is well spent. Alpha out.